I was uh, at Paramount and they said, make another show and create something. You must realize the first show I ever created was called Hey Landlord. It was 99th in the ratings. So I only had up to go. <laughs> so I, uh, they wanted a show that uh, uh, would do well in reruns. I, I used to write for the Dick Van Dyke show. And that show, in the reruns, Mary Tyler Moore's dresses didn't look too good. It looked out of date and the whole thing. So I said, okay, I'll do something that's period piece. There was probably only one other period show in television at the time called The Waltons. Uh, and so they wanted me to uh, create something. And uh, they liked this wonderful show. You might remember, you were all very young, but it was a show called I Remember Mama. Uh, uh, it was about a Norwegian family, and uh, I'm from the Bronx, in New York, where there weren't a lot of Norwegians around, and there wasn't, I didn't quite understand the whole family thing there, but it was very well done, and it was uh, not very funny, it was very warm, so I thought if I could put some comedy into warmth, I'd get it, and <coughs> I created what I thought would be not a, a reality show, but <laughs> fantasy show, idealistic. Uh, unfortunately, when you do idealistic or sentimental, it also borders on corny and not the too sentimental, so you, that's the battle you go in. But I thought if the characters were strong enough, we would get through it all. So I based it on a lot of guys I grew up with in the Bronx, uh, New York. Uh, in my neighborhood, you either had to catch a ball very well or you, you had to hit somebody very well, or, or you could design clothing, oddly enough. I came from a neighborhood where Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein came from, the same neighborhood in the Bronx. We all went to Dewey Clinton High School. But, uh, so I created guys based on a couple of guys who were pretty tough. Uh, Fonzie was based on a guy named Pete Wagner, who had a motorcycle, the only one in the whole neighborhood had a motorcycle. And another guy who uh, actually could, was pretty tough. He could take a rope, tie it to an ice truck, and pull it with his teeth. His <laughs> name, name was Anthony Ragusa, and later on Laverne Shirley, <coughs> the Ragu was named after him. But uh, with this kind of guy who didn't speak much, and uh, Richie Cunningham based on a guy actually in the church I went to, and uh, I was like Potsy. I was always mixed up, not doing too well. But, uh, and then we created it, and I tried to make a family that you hoped your family would be, not one that really maybe was. Plus, all the actors were taught immediately that they must hug each other. If they didn't get along, it was all right. But on the set, they had a hug, and uh, they all actually did get along very well. And. Uh, the big requirement was they must eat together. When they sit down to a meal, the whole family must do it, which is almost not heard of anymore in the state. But that's what we did. And uh, it started, and uh, they looked at it, and they said, who wants this? And they said, no. And they, buy it. <laughs> and they put it on the shelf. <laughs> but you see, I believe if you wait and you believe in things, it happens. And soon came another miracle thing called Grease, a, TV, uh, a Broadway show called Grease, and uh, another movie called uh, American Graffiti, right, George Lucas. That was the 50s. And then somebody at the network said, we have that. We have the 50s. Gary did that once. Where is it? <laughs> and they searched all over and they said, okay, do it again. And uh, this time, uh, let me see more of somebody from the other side of the tracks, as they say. And that's when we put in Fonzie. And the second time, they bought it. Ron Howard was doing a show called The Andy Griffith Show. And he was like 10 years old. And uh, I was doing another show on the lot. I worked for Danny Thomas at the time. For me. And he liked to throw the ball around Howard. So I used to throw the ball with him back and forth. Nobody would play with him. He was a pesky kid. But I played with him because I liked to throw the ball. And then years later, he said, I remember we used to throw the ball. Said, yeah, you want to be in the show? And he only had one requirement, Ron Howard. I mustn't stay the same age. If I'm on the show, I must 
get older. And I said, okay, and if you watch Happy Days, he was a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, senior, and then went to Northwestern to college is where I went. And uh, so we let him go. And then I hope oh, you must always also, what you think is not always correct, something you teach yourself. And I was looking for this tall, blondish looking Italian boy who spoke Italian. And instead I found a very short <laughs> Jewish boy who went to Yale University. <laughs> not what I was looking for, but you must look and see. And uh, we put him in the costume and suddenly Henry Winkler created a, a character that was just wonderful. And uh, we put him in the show with almost no lines. We didn't give him any lines for a while because I wasn't sure that guy should speak. And <laughs> then, of course, the network said, why don't you give him some lines and take away all those guttural sounds that you give him <laughs> and let him say words? And I said, well, why not do both? Because I like guttural sounds. And that's the guys I knew. And uh, he did both and created, I think, one of the uh, icon characters of television in the yeah. United States.